네, 성교 우리 대회를 맞이해서 아침에는 어, 요셉의 꿈 얘기했습니다. Following the World Missions Convention, um, we gave the message in the morning about the dreams of Joseph. And after this worship is over, we'll have one more meeting with our missionaries. But this is the message entitled, The Start of Joseph. <coughs> we need to look carefully at this today. When we talk about Joseph's start, what are we talking about? We're talking about him going in as a slave. And sadly, unfortunately, this was also the start of evangelism and missions. And it's also quite exquisite, but also it's very sad. And in other ways, we can have a, a grieving heart because of this. What do you think? Only when you understand this message carefully, I believe you can receive the correct answers. Many people have misunderstood the meaning of evangelism and missions. What is evangelism and missions? But God said this. In Genesis 12, 1 to 3, he said, Through you all nations will be blessed, and no one will be able to overtake you. Don't remain in the Tower of Babel. Don't remain in Chaldea of Ur. But go to the land I will show you. And then God promised again. In chapter 22, verse 13 to 20, I will make you into a great nation through your seed. And also, your descendants will overtake the cities of your enemies. And through your seed, all nations on earth will be blessed. This is evangelism and missions. Then Jesus said this in Matthew. In Matthew 4:19, Jesus says, "Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." When you say, "How can I evangelize?" That's actually an incorrect question. Jesus says, "Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." In Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15, it says Jesus called to him those he wanted and then he even explained the reasons so that he might be with them, that they might preach the gospel and also to have the authority to drive out the demons. Why is Jesus talking about demons? And the reason is because every non-believer is serving the demons. And that's why he will give the authority to overcome them. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. The resurrected Lord Jesus gave his message. He says, I will be with you. Now go to all nations. Go to all creation. And go to the ends of the earth. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. They did not have airplanes at that time, but he says, go to the ends of the earth. They did not have airplanes. They had, they had no cell phones back then, but how could he say, go to the ends of the earth? These words are still being fulfilled today, but the second thing that you need to realize is this. Because you do not understand evangelism and missions, your future generations will become slaves. This is a lesson in this way. There are so many pastors, but the churches are decreasing. There are so many theological seminaries out there, but the churches are closing their doors. 
It is because people have misunderstood evangelism and missions. If you do not understand evangelism and missions, then you have no choice but to see your children, your future generations, fall into slavery. Later on, during the age of Moses, everyone became slaves. In this way, Joseph became a slave. It looked like Joseph was just going in as a slave, but he understood evangelism and missions, so he actually went in there as a leader. And this is the grave difference, the huge difference between someone who understands evangelism and missions and one who does not. What was the message from the first service? It was about Joseph's dreams. He understood evangelism and missions. Yes, it looked like he was going in as a slave to Egypt, but he was actually going in as a leader. And he was going to become a leader um, who really understood evangelism and missions. Holding on to this answer, you need to uh, now go forward. As soon as you grab hold of this covenant, so many doors, realistic doors will open up. In the past, evangelism was the most difficult thing in the past. Not only was evangelism difficult, I was embarrassed to do it. Not only was I embarrassed to evangelize, but I just felt like it was such a difficult task. But then I realized it was me who had not understood the gospel correctly. But after realizing the gospel, evangelism became the easiest thing. If you really see things with the eyes of the gospel, people who don't understand this gospel or evangelism mission, all of them are living as slaves. However, those who do understand the gospel, God will raise them up and use them as rulers. You must never forget this. If we do not understand the gospel or evangelism and missions, our children, no matter how much they study, will become slaves. And even though they tried to teach their children very well and they diligently worked hard, their children became captives and colonized. But it was only through those few individuals who really understood the gospel that God raised them up as rulers. And of course, nothing can block God's gospel. It will be fulfilled. In our evangelism movement, so many things and episodes are happening. People come and go. I don't want to say anything about that because I already know the future. We already have a hard time having oneness for the sake of evangelism, but everything else is truly the work of Satan. I don't want to speak about it specifically because I already know the future. And the answer is the same. If you do not enjoy the gospel, you'll be a slave. Look at the history of Israel. They faced disasters seven times. There was never a time of peace for Israel. However, God called the minority, of very few individuals who knew the gospel and used them as rulers. And that is why God is never ceasing to do evangelism and missions even now. And no one can block evangelism and missions. 
But we cannot realize and that's why we suffer. With this amazing blessing we are not enjoying that's why our children and our future generations become slaves. But God uses the people who realize the gospel. This is the lesson of the Bible. Also the lesson of our present reality. You need to grab firmly to this covenant and then leave. So number one, the road of slavery was the beginning of the fulfillment of God's word. Wasn't it so? On the outside, that road towards slavery seemed to be such a huge problem. But for those who understood the gospel, it was the start of the word of God being fulfilled. And the second large point. For Joseph to go into Potiphar's house as a slave, it was the beginning of establishing the kingdom of God. May you have this blessing as well. Don't be deceived, don't sway, don't shake, but grab firmly to the covenant because God can do enough works through you. And world evangelization can surely happen through you. Never has God used people like the Pharisees and God will never use church authority. He has never used it at all. He cannot use the Jewish people who have so many Nobel Prizes. God cannot use the Jewish people with the mindset of the kibbutz for the sake of world evangelization. And that is why they themselves are destroyed, their children are destroyed, and they're causing so much trouble all around the world. God will use His own people, and He will save this world that is dying. But if you don't realize, it will become this way. Joseph had so many hardships but it didn't matter because he understood this covenant and his road of slavery became the beginning of the word of God being fulfilled. It looked like he was a slave in Potiphar's house but that was the beginning of the kingdom of God being established there. Really remember that. I said this before. Long ago in Korea, there was the upper class and the lower class. Now, the high class people were called the young bun, and they lived a very comfortable life, but people of the lower society, they would be slaves or servants, and their children would also become slaves. It was an inevitable situation. If you were a slave and you had a child, that child would be a slave as well. And the meaning, spiritual meaning, is also very great. There is this one owner who had a dog and the dog ran away. And the owner was very upset. And he wanted to find his dog. And so he started yelling at the servant. And the servant who was in charge of the cart, he started yelling at him saying, go find my dog. The servant in charge of the owner's cart or the chariot, he, um, he says, oh, that's not my job because I'm just in charge of the cart. Uh, I'm not in charge of the dog. In other words, he pretty much mm, talked back to the owner. So the owner said, is that right? Okay, then bring my cart. Bring my cart and you can drive me around so that I can find my dog. He had to go all around the whole village looking for that little dog with his owner. And he was having such a hard time. If he didn't say anything at all, he could have had a good time on his own looking around for the dog. The absolute plan of God, no man can block.
Don't be so foolish, but really hold on to that covenant of God that can break down the forces of darkness and do this mission of evangelism and evangelism and missions. Even now, the event that started in Genesis 3 is still happening. The USA has no idea what is happening right now. That event that happened in Genesis chapter 3 of, you, of, of Satan saying you can be like God, the New Age movement is still happening in America. Do you understand this? United States of America, people of America, do you know what the New Agers, Freemasons are doing? In every single room that they gather together, they invite evil spirits to come upon people. But that is the, the Nephilim movement of Genesis chapter 6, and it still is continuing today. And what are the people, the Jewish people, doing together with all the other religions, bringing a conglomerate of unified religion? What they're really saying is, let's all come together and let us make a name for ourselves and do the Babel Tower movement. What is the result of this? This entire world is filled with people with mental problems. Right now, it is an exponential growth of people with mental patient, mental problems. The mental institutes are overflowing with patients. Also, the homeless people in America, it's an exponential growth. Now, I went to San Francisco recently, and there were so many homeless people. There are so many homeless people, but what was interesting this time was that they dress very well. It's to the point where you cannot distinguish between who is uh, a homeless person because they dress so well. Also, the homeless people in Japan, Japan they're really high level. They sit down and they're reading newspapers. I don't know if they understand what's going on. And there are so many homeless people, so many people who, with, who have mental problems. We are in a big, we're in trouble. Meanwhile, the churches of Europe have all closed their doors. And the churches of America, they're, be, they're turning bankrupt. And 70, 80% of the churches here in Korea are non-self-sustaining, they're dependent. Your offering that you give to your own different churches, you know how precious that is? People don't even know that. You give your offering, right? Your offering is being used by God to save the churches of the world. But people don't even know the value of that. It's because they don't understand evangelism and missions. Joseph understood evangelism and missions. He had a dream about that. And that's why his road of slavery was a way to fulfill God's word. And people have said that in the past, when you had to walk from Canaan back to Israel, it would take about three months. And how, what great suffering he went through. But for Joseph, there's something that he knew. That dream of the sun, moon, and stars bowing down to him, that's world evangelization. For the sheaves to be bowing down to him, that meant family evangelization. Now, if you misunderstand, then you can misinterpret this, but this is world evangelization. What else did he realize? For eva Egypt evangelization and world evangelization, the best method was for Joseph to go this way. What is the method then? It's the actual, the most, the perfect method. And Joseph realized this accurately. Later on, if you know what he said, his confession, he said, brothers, it was not you who sold me into slavery, but it was God who sent me ahead of time. That's what Joseph said. May you understand clearly what evangelism and missions is, and may you walk correctly down this path. Now, after he was sold as a slave, he went into the house of Potiphar. You can't do things your own way as a slave. But after he was sold as a slave, he went into that person, the captain of the guard, Potiphar's house. Do you think that was coincidence? 
It says the Lord was with Joseph in verse 2 and he prospered. In verse 2 it says the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. What does this mean? What does it say in verse 3? Verse 3, it's very similar. It says that Joseph found favor in Potiphar's eyes. The master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord prospered or gave him success in everything he did. So verse 2 and 3 are very much the same. Now now, so let's read verse 5. It says, for the sake of Joseph, what does it say? It says the Lord blessed the household of, each, of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Both in the house and in the field, the Lord blessed. Now the house means the place where you live. But even outside in the field, that place was blessed as well. In other words, even the, the cabbage was blessed because that's part of the field. Upon all his possessions, everything he owned, God, God blessed for the sake of Joseph. Because of Joseph. What does it mean? That this really means that the goal is to break down the forces of darkness all around you and to bring the kingdom of God to be established. I believe in this fact 100%. It is the plan of God to bring and establish the kingdom of God in every step you take. So grab hold of that covenant. A non-believer said this to Joseph. You see, this is true evangelism. A non-believer said, The Lord is with you. And the Lord is prospering you. So starting today, don't be a slave. You'll be the manager of my whole household. Wow, what a way to be promoted. He's going to be the leader, the manager of his whole entire household. Why? Because the kingdom of God is established. When, before, when I was a soldier in the military, I was just sitting still, but people would come to me asking me things. If you really understand this fact, and because the kingdom of God is factually, realistically coming, other people will come to you and ask you, and all you need to do is give them the answer. The Lord was with Joseph. And because of Joseph, in this way, so many blessings came upon Potiphar's house. Well, before he was a slave, but now he's a manager, so I'm sure he changed his wardrobe. He's looking good. But if you look in the Bible, it said that Potiphar's wife kept her eye on Joseph and probably winked at him all the time. And one of the versions of the English Bible, it says that every day Potiphar's wife would wink at him because he was good looking. He was intelligent and handsome. But when you look at the Bible, maybe Potiphar's wife was a bad, a person of bad character, but she really, she had eyes to see what is good. Every day she tempted him. So you know Joseph, he is a, a very classy man, a very good looking person. But if the person that is trying to get him to notice her was a remnant with the gospel, of course he would respond. If it was a, a classy remnant that was winking at him, he'd wink back. But if it was Potiphar's wife, maybe she was getting, maybe she was older and she had a tummy. What would have happened if Joseph did what she asked? 
she, he probably could have had it easy in life, right? Perhaps he would be able to eat his meals very well. But later on, Potiphar's wife framed him. He did not do anything wrong, but she framed him. Potiphar listened to his wife and put him in prison. But for Joseph to be framed, it was the beginning of a new mission. It would be a different story if Joseph was so stressed and frustrated and resentful with what happened to him in prison. But in order for God to fulfill the dream that he gave to Joseph, he had to come out of this house. So this actually became a great opportunity, a new beginning for Joseph. For Joseph, he did not talk back because it was his opportunity. For Joseph to go to prison, it was his unique opportunity. I am not telling you all to go to prison. But inside of all your hardships, there is a unique opportunity inside of them all. What, uh, what is it? Also, for the platform for world evangelization, this was the only place for him to meet very important people. Where did Joseph go? He was placed in the in the prison where all of the king's prisoners were, very important people. We'll talk about it more in detail next Sunday, but that's when he was able to be officials of Pharaoh. God makes no mistakes. God did not make a mistake in sending you all to the Emmanuel Church. And you, all of you who cannot realize that, it's your, it's your mistake. It's not a mistake from God to allow you to live in Korea. If you think so, it's your mistake. But God is guiding you with a very important purpose. Fundamentally, if you don't really believe in God, how can you find anything in the Bible believable? You'll be just like the non-believer. You'll be like that, going back and forth, seeking your own benefit. Is that a real believer? The devil knows these things and that's why he's having such a fun time in the church. Even if you are having a hard time, may you be the main figures who will see the word of God being fulfilled as you're grabbing hold of the covenant. This was the very important conclusion then. Understanding evangelism and missions correctly means that you've understood the word of God correctly. 그렇죠. Isn't that so? 전도 성교를 이해했다는 것은 재앙을 막는 사명을 제대로 이해한 것이다. If you understand evangelism and missions correctly, that means you've understood the commission of blocking disasters. If you understood evangelism and missions, it means that you've understood what history is all about. Uh, taking this, many of our missionaries have to have their meetings. So in the Bible, we can see that there are three kinds of very important evangelism. Like what? There was a way, there was one way where God allowed his works to take place after he beat down his people. 
brought them through so much hardship through slavery or captivity that's called forced missions that's we can see that evidence in the Bible and there were some people who did missions unknowingly so it's the missions of doing it unknowingly yes they did missions but they had no idea what they were doing but then there was also the missions where you are very aware of what's happening it's called you know your mission if you do missions without knowing we'll call that grace but when you do know when you do missions and you have an idea what you're doing that's called your commission you know who was like that Jethro he understood what he was doing people like Rahab the prostitute she knew what she was doing she says I know that God is with you to the spies also people like Obadiah who knowing what he was doing is dangerous he hit a hundred prophets that's the missions of knowing also the people of Romans 16 who participated in world evangelization in such dangerous times they they did it fully aware and even if we're not trying so hard and struggling so much for it the answers will come it's true God gets rid of all the fakes and he will only allow those who really have the gospel to remain and thousands of people who would preach the gospel remained but here in Seoul as well we had so much hardship so much difficulties in and outside of the church but God allowed all those who love the gospel to remain if we really want to do true evangelism and true missions God will send away all the fakes and he will allow those who really know the gospel to remain that is the method of God don't you agree that's how world evangelization will happen and you can see how God does this tremendous work through Joseph what does it mean it means that evangelism and missions is not accomplished by our own power but God himself will do it but how are we going to do it we'll talk about that next week for all of you church officers may you gain strength if you make your resolution to live your life for evangelism and missions God will open doors in your businesses I am so sure of it we see the evidences of it in history and church history there's also history there's evidences in the Bible that's why Jesus says to you you will not be you will be not my lecturers but my witnesses may I bless you all in the name of the Lord that you would be God's witnesses Lord we thank you may we be the witnesses of the true gospel may the kingdom of God be established where we testify to the people who are dying the evidence is that God is with us in Jesus Christ's name we pray Amen